that should make things a little bit better. Uh, welcome to another episode of It Builds Character. If you're unfamiliar with It Builds Character, I'm going to get it a little bit out of the way up front. It Builds Character is a show that I like to run mostly every Wednesday. Uh, I like to say that mostly because sometimes things, uh, real life comes up or I have to help another friend out on a different stream or something like that and I can't do that. But what it is, is I build 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons characters, or the version of those, for whatever pop culture character that you, the fans and the viewers, suggest. Uh, sometimes it goes very well, other times it doesn't. Um, I've built everything from anime characters to movie characters, video game characters, TV shows, uh, even as recently as epic poems characters, uh, as well as character concepts like build a warforged pirate or a bugbear that wields a polearm and make it the best you can possibly make it. So, with all of that being said, this time I'm going to be building Gilgamesh from Fate. Uh, what I will tell you is, one, I have nothing again. I like anime. This is how it is. But I don't like building anime characters, and I will tell you why. I don't like building anime characters because... Anime characters over everything else, with the exception of certain superheroes, are the worst to build. Because depending on when you choose to build them from, they are god-level power. Uh, they have all of the abilities. They have so many things that there's no way you can really pigeonhole them into the class structure of 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, but I'm going to do my best. Also, if my understanding of Gilgamesh is correct, he is basically a god. So things are not really going to work out so great there. But we're going to do our damnedest to try. I will say 100% up front that I have never watched Fate. So I know nothing about this character other than what I've been able to do in some research. But in doing so, I think I have an okay idea, but I heavily welcome your interaction in the chat to let me know where I'm wrong, things that I may have not uh, remembered or read, things that need to be added, things that can be removed, all that kind of stuff. So I look to you all for assistance with all of these character builds, but especially ones when it's an anime that I've never watched. So, that being said, similar to last time, we're going to attempt to try to build the character in D&D Beyond. So, we can jump over here to uh, my D&D Beyond here, where we're going to attempt to continue building this character. So, first off, I don't really understand the world of fate. It, re it, like, it reads to me like it's a video game but maybe it's not um i'm not entirely sure uh so we're gonna treat it as such so it seems as though gilgamesh or also known as archer i guess if i my understanding is correct he is like the god child of you know, I don't know, similar, and it sounds like the backstory is like Gilgamesh from the epic poem. Um, but he's the best at everything, uh, as typical with every anime character, in my experience. Also, I'm gonna real quick make an adjustment because you can't see the chat at all. Um, so let's just go ahead and background color okay. all right there 
now. Should be able to at least see if people have any comments they want to make. So, all right. So I think that makes him a human character or we'll use human as the closest analogy we can get to whatever characters are in this world. Everybody has weird names like Saber or Archer. And then I, I just, like I guess I really have no concept. So I really do welcome your input in the chat. So we'll use variant human because Regular human, uh, I don't believe in. That's a personal opinion. Uh, we're gonna leave the languages out as we don't really care too much about languages and like heavy background decisions when it comes to uh, it builds character because that's just one thing we can spend less time on. Also, one thing I will tell you up front that we can do that I do every time is I build my characters at twelfth level, uh, puts them a little bit past the halfway point gives them a lot of their good abilities and then it also gives me the ability to have uh ability score improvements to play around to try to really cap them out to where they need to be uh, and i also use the standard array stats which is 15 14 13 12 10 8 because that allows me uh consistency between all the characters i build rather than trying to roll stats because that would never work out well uh, or point by because again, that's just one more thing I have to do on my end. Uh, as such, though, there will be concessions because characters, like I said, especially from anime, they're the most charismatic, the strongest, the fastest, the most resilient, the hyper intelligent all at once. And you won't be able to make that a realistic option if you are building with a standard array. So... Just gonna have to let that go. So, that being said, let's take a look at some stuff I've read about Gilgamesh here. So, on this other window that you don't see, I have a couple of uh, Wikipedia pages open. So, it says he was placed in the Archer class. He has a ton of money. Um, let's see, he has a very high rank in Charisma which is good because he commands armies and things. So that makes sense. Um, he normally possesses the highest rank of divinity. I don't really know how that translates. Um, he's got uh, versatility in his weapons, allowing him to assault any weakness. Um, he's not physically as strong as some of the other characters. Um, his just whatever these noble phantasms are, that's where his true power lies. Um, called the Servant Killer. Um, he doesn't really fight seriously. He kind of fights aloof and uh, just uses his power, firepower at will. Um, cheat like strength without restraint. Depending on which anime you're watching. Um, let's see. Does not favor hand-to-hand -hand combat. Exercising his true power only requires his body and the key to his treasury. Um, take him down before he gets serious. He has a sense of sight. Several levels above the ordinary. So he's got a very high passive perception and investigation is how I'm reading that. Uh, golden armor materialized from magical energy. Extremely strong. Provides magic resistance. Um, let's see. Did not have the ability to resist ma magecraft during life. Uh, let's see. I think. Um, hmm. That's the best I got, based on what we just read. So, um, all I know from what I've been able to read online, and again, this seems like a couple of you are hanging out there in the chat. If you've watched Fate and you know stuff about Gilgamesh, feel free to please chime in. Uh, so we're building him as a human character as the base, even though I realize he's probably not. We know he has a very high charisma from commanding battle forces. We know he has a very high sight, rain, or perception. 
We know he's not super physically strong, but we do know he's resilient. We know he wears heavy golden armor, and he has a just a variety of things and these noble phantasms that he rains down on his enemies. Uh, I can't actually tell what kind of weapon he uses other than I can see in some of the imagery he's got a sword, but it looks like I feel like with a name like Archer and the Archer class or whatever that he should use a bow. But again, the literature that I'm reading on this is very inconsistent. Uh, so any help would be appreciated. But let's keep going. So, uh, obviously, we're going to have to go with Perception as a skill. It's got a very high uh, sight. Ability scores, we'll come back to those in a second. And we're going to go with Observant again uh, to deal with that whole high... Uh, what's it called? The high sight skill. Uh, Alright, so let's jump ahead. <sighs> so what kind of class are we building? Oh, let me behind the scenes. Uh, no, it shouldn't matter actually. Uh, Alright. So my gut says fighter, because it seems like that's what he is. Um, again, I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, he seems like he may be a jack of all trades, as it were, in some existence with the access to all these phantasms, which in the most literal sense a jack of all trades would be a rogue. But, uh, I don't, I don't really, I'm sorry, a rogue, a bard, but I don't really see him having magic unless these noble phantasm things are more akin to magic. In which case, I have absolutely no idea because I don't have a ton of information on them. So I'm sticking with my gut and we're going with Fighter. Uh, and we're going to go up to level 12. So we're going to choose some proficiencies here. We're going to choose Intimidation as a skill. And Athletics as the other skill. I think that those are pretty accurate. Uh, based again, we'll probably get a uh, background that kind of gives us uh, persuasion. Oops, did I choose it? There you go, intimidation. So again, my gut says Archer because of the fact that he's called Archer and he rains stuff down from a distance. Is what I read in one section. Um, Let's see. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Only those who are worn themselves are complete. He's available. In terms of the firepower available to him due to the versatility of his weaponry, he could be said to have the strength of five servants plus a putting him at an advantage against certain people whose strength is based on single entity ability. Yeah. I don't know. We're going with fighter. As far as our fighting style, again, I, it's hard to say, given the fact that it sounds like he has a versatility in weaponry. We're gonna go with archery, because I'm sticking with archer, which is my gut, unless I hear otherwise from you guys in the chat. So now we need to choose a martial archetype. We've got... With the exception of Templar, which you can ignore because that is a homebrew uh, one of, uh, you know, a friend of mine who designed it. Um, and you can ignore Purple Dragon Knight because it's the worst fighter subclass in existence. So, again, feeling Archer here. Uh, my gut wants to go with Arcane Archer, but that also may be wrong uh, but as someone who commands armies and things like that I'm th possibly battle master may be the better option um, hmm. then again if noble phantasms are similar to spells eldritch knight may be a better call so I'm in a little bit of a pickle here on which subclass to choose 
unless you choose the different arcane arrow shots that you'd make as an arcane archer as noble phantasms. Uh, I got... Listen. Thank you, Ash, for showing up and providing some combat. I'm... Yeah. I... Uh, I guess, right? That was my thought. Uh, an archer. Um... Am I way off base on that? Uh, in, in assuming that? I, it looks like he uses a sword from the imagery that I've seen. Um, but I don't know. We'll come back to this. Uh, he opens portals and weapons come out. Oh, good. That doesn't exist in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Um... Well, the shit out of a goddamn dick. I, I, what am I gonna do here? Um, all right, well, let's go to his ability scores, and we'll come back. Um, all right. So we know he's supposed to be, yeah, he's an anime character. So charisma is supposed to be super high. His sight. Supposed to be super high. We're gonna go with a 14 dex. Oh, good. I hate anime characters in this. This is the worst. Um. Not the strongest dude. He's getting an 8 strength because he's not the strongest dude. Uh, I realize that's probably not the case, but that's the nature of standard array. So we got him at 14 wisdom. We can jump back to race real quick. Uh, we're going to go to plus one charisma. Okay. All right. So that makes me feel a little better about my choice there. Uh, and we will add plus one to dexterity. Okay. So now we're at stats are currently sitting 8 strength, 15 dex, 10 con, 12 intelligence, 14 wisdom, 16 charisma. I'm going with... Going with arcane archer. Even though I hate Arcane Archer as a class type, personally. I think it uh, it needs to be homebrewed a little bit better. Um, in my opinion. But uh, let's take a look here. So it's going to be Arcane Archer. Um, oh, good. Uh, anime characters, man. I tell you, they really just mess up my day when it comes to building them because they just have everything it's like if someone was like build naruto or build goku it's just like i don't what what when like that's uh that's how it goes uh you know i need all i need they need, they're all like level 20 plus characters uh, and they would have multiple, like, 20 levels in one whole class and then in several others, just trying to fit them all uh, into how to make this work. Also, hello everyone in the chat. This is it builds character. We're building Gilgamesh from Fate. We're doing it over on D&D Beyond. I will export the PDF character sheet out, drop it into Google Drive for anybody who wants to download it themselves. Um, but yeah, here we go. So we're going to go with Arcane Archer. Uh, we're gonna give him Prestidigitation as a spell, and we're gonna give him Arcana as a skill as well. There's a Prestidigitation, Prestidigitation as a spell. So his Arcane Shots option is gonna get the Banishing Arrow. He's gonna get, I don't even remember what all these do, the uh, Bursting Arrow. Um... Just does some extra damage. Uh, okay, so I Ash, you're my expert today. I'm gonna give him the grasping arrow, and we'll give him the 
shadow arrow. All right, so he's got some arrows that he can shoot. We're gonna have to give him some magic weapons. We're gonna have to make some up, I think. We're gonna go with ability score improvement. Give you some extra dexterity here. Where's that put us? 17 dex. Um, what do we do that gives a plus one dexterity? Too much we can do with a plus one dex. Hmm. Let's see here. I'm not seeing anything that jumps out at me. Let's go back to his race and we'll make this ability score improvement. Let's see, what are we gonna make it? Um, what do we have? Let's make it. Let's make it wisdom. That should give us an odd wisdom score. Uh, okay. So we'll go here and we'll choose resilient wisdom. Main stuff is a shooting sword from portals, flying throne, vaporize the world sword, chains that trap gods, all the wine, and in the OG versions of weapons. He never uses them though. But a king that's three quarters god. Yeah, alright, that's again, anime characters. That is what it is. Hmm. Let me just expand this gray box here a little bit. There we go. Alright. So, we've got an 18 dex now. We've got... Resistance to... Or proficiency in wisdom saving throws. Hmm. So we're gonna say... I'm gonna keep the stats here, and the last one, we're just gonna give him lucky. Because it sounds like, from what you're saying, it's more luck and lucky weapon choices than actually being good. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna keep his constitution at 10 then. Uh, there we go. Alright, background. Persuasion. We'll add starting equipment. Uh, go with. Let's see, we made them all dexterity though. Ah, oh, whatever. Oh, let's make this a longbow. Engineer's pack. Broken blade. Set of dice. Chainmail. We're gonna add all that. Yeah, I read that he has the best armor in the game. 
or something, or the best armor, but he never uses it. All right, so here's where we are on D&D &D Beyond. I realized that the uh, sort of gray box, we'll see if we can't shrink that down a little bit. Keep it uh, a little more so you can guys can see. So this is what we're currently working with, not including magic weapons, which just sounds like where most of our crazy abilities are going to come from are homebrew created magic weapons. So we'll go here, we'll add in longbow, and we'll add in a short sword. Um, so we'll go ahead and look at features and traits. Again, we built them as an archer, more of a pun on than anything else. Uh, second wind, um, fighting style. We've got uh, Action Surge to do more attacks, which fits into his class. He can do three attacks on a regular, six with Action Surge. He's got access to Prestidigitation, so some basic, you know, uh, fun magics. He's got two Arcane Shots per short rest. So we've got those out there, right? The Banishing Arrow, Bursting Arrow, Grasping Arrow, Shadow Arrow, doing all variety of different abilities. Three attacks. When you fire an arrow from a short bow or a long bow, you can choose to make it magical. Um, and then the magic fades once the arrow hits. When you make an attack roll with a magic arrow and miss, you can use a bonus action to reroll the attack roll against a different target within 60 feet. We have one use of Indomitable. Uh, we have the Observant Feet. We have Resilient Wisdom. And we have Lucky. Now we are in to the equipment section. So, I think we can go, so we're going to look at Longbow. Let's, let's go with, uh, go with a plus three Longbow, right? That's probably realistic. We've got a sword. Let's see what kind of swords we can get. Um... So we're looking through D&D Beyond's sword section at the moment. Um, hmm. Give him the Sword of Cass, the Vecna Sword. Plus three to attack damage rolls, crits on 19 or 20. Deals an extra 2d10 slashing damage to undead. If it's not bathed in blood, does extra stuff. Um, let's see. It's got the be um, beneficial and detrimental properties. Um, you add a d10 to your initiative at the start of every combat. In addition, when you can use an action to attack with the sword, you can transfer some of the attack bonus to your AC. Uh, spells. You have access to certain spells just from the sword, which could fit into things. Sword of Cast is a sentient, chaotic, evil weapon. That's not really... We're just adding it because of all the shit that it does. Um, so let's see what spells it gives him. Does it tell you? Ah. Call lightning, divine word, and finger of death all come from the sword. Doesn't let you choose... Uh-huh. The properties. But we can do that ourselves here. Um, okay, we're going to go here and we're going to go with... Uh, add some dimensional shackles for our chains that can trap things. We'll tune to the sword. Alright. Plus three longbow. What else did you say? Uh, wine. And uh, I think we can go here and we can just say... Uh, Portable hole. Let's see. All right, nothing in here comes up. Uh, it's really all it wants to give me right now.
All right. Dancing sword. We'll add all of the dancing swords. Let's just not attune to these, but we'll have all of the dancing swords. So there, that's that's good. Got our plus three longbow in there. We added in the sword of Cass. Which I thought was a oh, it's a long sword. I thought it was a great sword. Whatever, it doesn't matter. We'll add in the armor. Which we're gonna go with armor. Well, let's see. Armor of in vulnerability. Okay. Yes. Hi, Jordan. Uh, yep. So we've got. We currently, even though it's not technically uh the the sword were like for the with the purposes of vecna we gave him the sword of Cass. so the sword of Cass is uh is actually a defender long sword um amongst all the other nonsense that the sword of Cass provides uh yeah, we're ignoring the sentience of the sword of Cass and all that stuff and just going with like it gives you bonuses to initiative and extra damage. Um, let's go here. Other possessions. All the things. There we go. Now that's in there. Um, all right. <laughs> so let's actually, just for funsies, let's figure out what the... Um, let's duplicate this page. Uh, and let's figure out what the properties that come with the Sword of Cass are, because this will be fun. So we get one minor beneficial property. Let's see if this will work. Uh, let's see. Moonblade. Artifact. Effect properties, I think is where it is. Okay, do I have dice? I do. All right, let's see what these would be. All right, so he's got one minor beneficial property, which is going to be in this case, uh, he can't be charmed or frightened. So I guess we'll add that under features here. Can we add custom features on D&D Beyond? Can we alter the sword? Customize with notes, right? Yeah. Immune to charmed and frightened. All right, he gets one major uh, beneficial property. All right, which is Seven. Uh, that's dumb. Actually, oh wait, I'm over here. Oh, one of your ability scores increases by two to a maximum of twenty-four. Well, we're just gonna go make uh the dexterity go up again. Actually. Let's make, hmm. Let's make the charisma go up by two. So that's the major beneficial property. Uh, and then he's gonna have one minor detrimental property, which is gonna be a 67. Uh, non-magical flames are... How's that detrimental? 
Non-magical flames within 30 feet are extinguished within 30 feet of you. Let's do charisma. One major detrimental property. 20. Artifact houses a bodiless life force that is hostile towards you. Each time you use an action to use one of your artifact's properties, there's a 50% chance that the life force tries to leave the artifact and enter your body. Fail a DC 20 charisma saving throw. It succeeds and you become an NPC under the DM. Well, that's probably the best way to have this character be. An NPC under the DM's control. Because that's the only way you can really exist as a character like this. Alright. There are our notes. So I think, I don't know, but I think we're done. Uh, it's hard to build, as I've stated in every It Builds character video that I ever do, um, anime characters are the worst things to try to build as a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons character. Uh, with the exception of some, because I did build Rurouni, uh, um, Himura Kenshin from Rurouni Kenshin, and I think I actually did a pretty good job on that one on an earlier episode. And I think that that was okay because he wasn't like, I don't know, it wasn't like a typical anime character. Um, like, he is a samurai and a swordsman and all of the cool things that he could do were bonus sword attacks. Which was easy to do because we could build a samurai in Dungeons and Dragons pretty easily. But when you have someone like Ichigo from Bleach... Or, okay, so you said Guts was good. That's, thank you. Um, but characters like this, when they have literally all of the things, they don't live in the confines of what 5th edition. Now, was this 3.5, for example? I probably could have built him as he is with literally all of the things. I mean, I would have had to pour over, this show would be a lot longer as I'd be pouring over hundreds of books and thousands of feats and alternative class features and magic item atop a magic item with alterations here and there and you could probably get pretty damn close to what you're actually saying he would be but this is fifth edition designed to be much simpler uh in it, the character creation process and not to make characters too op and anime characters typically are um in my opinion so Let's do a quick once through of everything we did do. Uh, and then we'll kind of go through the little end of the It Builds character spiel. Uh, and I'll get a couple of announcement things out of the way. And we'll call this episode done. So this is Gilgamesh from Fate. We built him as a variant human fighter. Uh, we put stats in high charisma as a you know, high charisma is one of his things. Uh, we put him at points in dexterity mostly because we know he's not very strong. Uh, and we made him an arcane archer, sort of as a, a pun, but also I've never built one. But uh, but it's mostly because he was the archer class and that was sort of his name before his real name was revealed. Uh, low constitution because he's not too tough. Decent intelligence, one because arcane archer, but also supposed to be very smart. High wisdom, because he's supposed to have quite high sight capabilities. Uh, his passive perception and investigation are relatively high, as he does have observant. Uh, as I guess, uh, Jordan, this is the best uh, attempt that I could do. And when typically pulling from an anime, you have to pick a point in time to call it. Like, this is where you call it from. Because if you go later in the series, they have literally all of the things, but he had them from the beginning. Um, so for skills, we went with Arcana, Athletics, Intimidation, Investigation, Perception, Persuasion. Um, oh, yeah, I, uh, I've i never watched Fate as well. Uh, so this was a whole, like, this is why I typically like to rely on my friends in the chat here to help me out because sometimes I'm building things that I've never watched. Uh, I only have so much time in the day to be brushed up on most things pop culture. Um, but anyway, uh, let's keep moving. So he does have access to Prestidigitation uh, as a spell, and he has access to a couple of other spells 
due to uh, the sword of cast that we gave him as an item. We'll go through his features and traits real quick. Uh, archery, fighting style, second win, standard fighter, fair, right, second win, action surge. Uh, Arcane Archer gave us the Arcane Shots, which we're also doing to sort of represent how he can summon forth all of these magical powers, whether they be swords or items. So we gave him a bunch of different Arcane Shots that kind of do different things, whether they be banishing or dealing extra damage or, you know, stunning or, or restraining. Um, uh, the Shots are magical. If you miss, you can make another attack and then Indomitable. Uh, we gave him Lucky because it sounds like he was just lucky enough to get the thing that gives you all of the things. Uh, Resilient Wisdom because it made sense with the stats and it also fits the character. And then again, Observant to represent this character's high sight capabilities. Um, in the background, we just went with Soldier. Uh, as far as equipment goes, again, we gave him the Sword of Cass, ignoring the Sentience and the Vecna side of things. Oh, great. I have a Windows update. We're going to snooze that for right now. Um, which has all the powers, but it's mostly because it gives you... Um, yes, lucky to be born three quarters uh, god king of the world. Yeah. Um, plus three to attack and damage. Crit hit on 19 or 20. Extra damage versus undead. Uh, it has the defender property, so you can take away from the attack and add it to damage. Um... You add a d10 to your uh, initiative at the start of every round, and you do have access to those couple of spells, as well as the properties, right? Immune to Charm and Frightened, plus two to Charisma, Magical Flames Extinguish around you, and the sword wants to try to take you over. Um, armor of Invulnerability, so that's magic armor that provides resistance to things, even though he chooses not to ever wear armor. Uh, and then, since he can summon literally all of the swords, we gave him every kind of dancing sword possible. Uh, we give him a plus three longbow to fit again with the archer theme. Dimensional shackles, as he has magic chains that can literally bind gods. I gave him a portable hole as sort of a funny way to explain how all these things appear from nowhere. Um, and that is pretty much it. Uh, oh, and then again, most importantly, in the other possessions is all of the things. So what I will do when I am done here is I will go down here and I will export this character sheet and I will drop it in a Google Drive folder, which I'm going to jump over to that folder right now because it's over here on my personal drive. Uh, so let's go here. So under it builds character, you can see here all of the characters that I've built in the past. Um, again, everything from Shrek to Sephiroth to Captain America, uh, Darth Vader, then character concepts like the Polearm Bugbear, uh, somewhere in here I built out the Warforged Pirate, uh, that kind of a thing. So they're all here, I'll throw in this character sheet at the end as well, and let's jump down here to the list. I will put the list right here. I'll put all of these things right here in the chat for you. You guys want to check it out. So here you can see... Oops, and I did get delayed by a week here. Actually, two weeks. So we can uh, shift all these dates up here. And I will put the Beowulf uh, link here so you guys can check out the video. But you can see here's where we are. So, so far, Season 1 character lists are here. Season 2, we started with Alcard from the Castlevania Netflix series. I just built Beowulf from the epic poem of the same name the previous time, back in uh, February. Then there was a couple of weeks where um, I had to help other folks out on other streams and things, so the show didn't end up happening. Uh, and one was because I was looking to try to build Gilgamesh from the epic poem, not Gilgamesh from the anime. Uh, so we built Gilgamesh tonight. So next week is the Bloodstorm Blade. So we're trying to replicate a 3.5 edition character. I think can't remember if it's a. I think it's a prestige class from Tome of Battle, uh, which was one of the later releases in 3.5, and a very good book if you have not read it uh, and you're familiar with 3.5. Um, so uh, let's let's see. Uh, 
Let's see if I can't build the Bloodstorm Blade character concept. Then we'll be building a Pokemon Trainer, Doctor Strange, Corvo from Dishonored, and you can see down the list here. Uh, we're going to be building a Digimon in May. That ought to... Oops. I'm not if I delete it. Uh, Digimon in May. That'll be interesting. And then again, we have some more anime characters, my favorite. But some that I think will be interesting to build, like Yusuke Urameshi from Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, Kirito from Sword Art Online could be interesting because it's just a dual-wielding kind of fighter character. So that might be buildable. Also, Sword Art Online is a video game, so it has a little more structure to help us make some sense out of things when it comes to D&D. &D. Um, building Ben 10, a character from Bionicle. Um, you got a, a Disney character, right? Shadow Man from Princess and the Frog. Um, got Bulk and Skull from the Power Rangers. Um, Percy Jackson. Uh, I do have a couple other ones that I just I have to add in here that were recently added couple other anime characters uh who was there was one that was recently sent to me i think today um yeah i know but we're gonna pretend that sword Art online has structure rimaru from that time i got reincarnated as a slime was asked to be uh built as well um someone also asked me to build cloud since i built sephiroth so I think we're going to go... I have to just comb through everything, but we'll go with Cloud. And these may shift in the order um, based on where things go and who else suggested. So if you guys have any suggestions in the chat... Uh, oh, okay. All right, American Gods. That I'm familiar with as I did read the book. So... Um, All right, well, you know what we can do? We can do both for you, Jordan. You're a friend, and uh, you are helping me out on the show on Friday, which I'll talk about. Uh, so we'll add them both into the list. Again, they may shift out a little bit based on I don't want to uh, screw anybody else over with theirs. But more importantly, potentially, good sir, we could possibly do those live at Gen Con if you want. We could stream it. We could build the characters together at Gen Con if we find time. So that's an option that we have. Um, yeah, let's do that. We'll set up a we'll set up a time, and we'll stream it, and uh, we'll do it together. We'll see if we can get a couple other folks in, uh, and we'll do that. So I think that'll be very fun. Um, all right, so that's in the books. We're gonna throw these guys off to the side over here. We're going to say, uh, Gen Con. So, um, all right. So, and again, any suggestions? I will attempt to build literally anything. I built Tingle, uh, if you look back in Season 1. Uh, we have done Samurai Jack, actually. Samurai Jack does exist right here from Season 1. Uh, we'll just do a quick rundown. Uh, okay. Oh, he's from Dune. Yeah, uh, again, guys, throw out your suggestions. I will add them in. Oh, we can move that up here. Like these. So if you look back, like I said, I built Tuxedo Mask, uh, Leroy Jenkins. Uh, someone asked me to build the most dragony dragon-based character I could. So everything dragon you could come up with. I built Darth Vader, which was a little bit tricky. I built Iron Man which was even harder because uh, I was using the old school version of the Artificer to try to build Iron Man, which was very interesting. Um, uh, I built Groot. Uh, I built Shrek, <laughs> which was interesting. Um, Ghost Rider, Tingle, a generic Power Ranger. Uh, we did Kenshin. We built a level 20 character, but the person's suggestion was a level 20 character with at least one level in every class. So that was a disaster. Um, Steve Rogers, which I should put in here as Captain America, in case people don't know who Steve Rogers is. Um, Kim Possible, uh, the 10th Doctor, Castiel from Supernatural. Uh, and actually on the YouTube channel, if you search, we actually did a Civil War 
where we had one of my friends play Iron Man and one of my friends play Captain America and they did a one-on-one -on -one battle and fought each other to see who would win in the creation of Ted's Captain America versus Ted's uh, Iron Man. So that was a pretty interesting little thing we did as well. So that's kind of stuff that we can do in the future with other things that you guys come up with. Um, so the luckiest man alive, huh? We can add that, sure. Yeah, again, uh, I do like the things like you brought up there, Ash. Those are always fun when people suggest a character concept because then I have free range to just do whatever I want. Uh, when I'm sort of pigeonholed into uh, something like that, it I don't have any problem. As, as you may not know about me, I love building characters in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. That's why I created this show because I wanted to take the love that I have of building characters in any RPG and then turn it into content that I can share with you guys. And also it helps that most of these characters are built, all the characters are built with standard array. They're all built with more or less, with the exception of like Hellboy, with base races that you can do in Dungeons and Dragons. The only time I take liberties in homebrewing things is in magic item creation. But for the most part, everything is something that you could replicate yourself with a character if you wanted to play this character in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. It's doable without too much homebrewing and too much tweaking on your end. So that's also why I sort of do this. So like if you wanted to try to play Link from Legend of Zelda, this character is pretty well designed to let you play Link uh, with the exception of needing some homebrew magic items to make things like the hookshot uh, and things like that. Um. Yeah, so, wow, let's start the music over so we get a little more upbeat here. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. I'll just get a couple plugs out of the way real quick. One, two sponsors here on the channel, Elderwood Academy and Initiative Coffee Company. Uh, Elderwood Academy, if you buy anything from that referral link, a little piece comes back to help out Nerd Immersion. Initiative Coffee Company, you can go there and use our coupon code that's listed there in the chat to get $2 off the order. I'm not just bragging because they're a sponsor. It is some of the best coffee I've ever had, and it's made by gamers for gamers. Um, also, this Friday night, 3.22 at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be running the newly potentially released earlier than it should have been Dungeons & Dragons Stranger Things Starter Set. So this just recently came out. Um, even though it shouldn't be out until May 1st if you look at everything else. So Think Geek may actually get in some trouble with Wizards for it, but I got it from them. Uh, so I will be running this. This is basically, I did a whole review on it. I don't need to go through everything, but, um, it's the starter set for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, but it has a cool adventure written by Mike from Stranger Things, like, from his perspective. His, uh his campaign so i'm going to be running that this friday night 3 22 at 8 p.m eastern here on twitch uh and i will have jordan who happens to be in the chat right there uh he will be playing uh, i will have jb aka drop the die uh celeste conowich from the venture mains uh and then i also will have um looks like possibly jen vaughn uh from d20 dames and possibly uh, a fifth player as well, uh, and they will all be playing the pre-gen characters that come with the adventure. So if you want to see Stranger Things in Dungeons & Dragons come out Friday night, uh, this Friday, to see a fun stream, we're going to run through the basically the whole module. Um, so it should be a good time. Um, I hope to see you guys there. Uh, it's only going to be a one-shot, guys, uh, so we're going to go through basically the entire section it starts at level three um we're gonna go through all that but you'll see things that you like from stranger things like uh possibly the demogorgon may make an appearance uh so if you want to see how that goes down uh the upside down also may make an appearance so you should probably come check it out it's gonna be a good time um i think it's gonna be really fun 
yeah, yeah, it's gonna be an interesting, interesting time. So uh, we shall see on Friday night. Um, but right now, uh, let's see if I remember how you can do this in Twitch. Uh, so we're gonna raid uh, with everyone here the Venture Maidens, my dear friends, who are live streaming right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and see. I think it's just slash raid and then the Venture Maidens. Let's see if this works. This channel is intended for a mature audience. So they are just getting ready to start even though they normally start a half an hour ago. Oh, look at that. I timed it right. So, let's go raid them, show them some love, uh, and I will see you guys uh, on the next It Builds Character. Have a great night, everyone.